They say cash is king and that it's a lifeblood of a business. Therefore, being able to accurately produce a cash flow forecast is an essential skill for business people to be able to predict how much money their business expects to receive in and pay out over a given period of time. This video explains cash flow forecasting and how to produce one for a business. A cash flow forecast is a business tool which estimates how much money will be coming into the business which is known as cash inflows and what money will be going out of the business which is known as cash outflows over a set period of time. Put simply, a cash flow forecast predicts the movement of money into and out of a business's bank account. Once a business has conducted a cash flow forecast, it provides them with something known as a cash balance. This is an estimate of the bank balance at the end of each period calculated, which is normally shown on a per month basis. Now a key term to remember when conducting a cash flow forecast is net cash flow. This is the difference between the cash inflows and the cash outflows. If the business's cash inflows are greater than their cash outflows, then they have a positive net cash flow. Which is good for the business as they are predicting that they will have more money coming in than they will need to pay out in the coming period. However, if their cash inflows are lower than their cash outflows, they have a negative cash flow, which means they are predicting they will pay out more money than what they will receive in during that period of time. And if a business has long periods of negative net cash flow, this may lead to financial difficulty and closure of the business. Therefore, cash flow forecasting is a very important tool for any business. So let's have a look at some other key reasons for businesses to conduct a cash flow forecast. First of all, it helps to prevent insolvency. If a business was to run out of cash, it becomes insolvent, which means that the business can't pay its debts, meaning it is in danger of being closed down. Therefore, being able to predict cash shortages provides the business with the time to be proactive and resolve the situation before it arises. Another key reason businesses use cash flow forecasting is to help them to obtain external finance. For example, if a business wanted to take out a bank loan, the bank is likely to want to see historical cash flows and future forecasts before approving the finance. Being able to pay employees and suppliers is absolutely crucial for any business. For example, imagine if you were a supplier and a business didn't pay you for the stock you sold them. Would you supply them again? It's likely that you wouldn't. More importantly, if you were an employee and didn't get paid, imagine how you would feel. You would be demotivated at the very least, but may also refuse to work or leave the business completely. Therefore, by conducting a cash flow forecast, a business can be confident that they will have the sufficient cash to ensure all payments are made on time or they can make arrangements to generate more cash if this is required. A cash flow forecast also allows a business to predict all of its income and expenses for a set period of time. These can become targets for the business which they can then monitor and compare their actual income and expenses against over time, allowing them to assess their performance. Once a cash flow forecast has been completed, it provides the business with key information and data which the business can then use to support its plans for the future, helping them to answer key questions such as Should we employ a new member of staff and can we afford to? Should we expand our business and open up a new store? Can we afford to reward our shareholders and employees with a bonus next month? However, it's very important to recognise that a cash flow forecast isn't an exact science and is in fact just a prediction of what a business thinks will happen in the future. Therefore, it can be very difficult to create an accurate cash flow forecast. So the business owner should use this as a guide rather than assuming that this is what will happen. It is also more difficult for a new business to create a cash flow forecast as they have no previous figures to help it estimate its future cash inflows and outflows. For example, they don't know how well their product will sell or exactly what their utility bills will be. At this point, the business owner will have to make predictions of what they think will happen and then monitor the business's cash flow carefully over time to see whether their estimates were realistic and they can then make changes if not. As the years go by 
and the business becomes more established, the owner can compare their actual cash flow against a cash flow forecast to monitor whether it's achieving its targets. And the cash flow forecast should in theory become more accurate year on year. Just before we look at an example of conducting a cash flow forecast, it's important to understand where common cash inflows and cash outflows typically come from. Firstly, we will look at some common cash inflows. Money from sales to customers is a key cash inflow and one of the main reasons most businesses exist. Capital from investors is another key cash inflow, whether this be the business owner or minority shareholders. Sourcing external finance is very common in business, especially in the form of bank loans or business grants. However, it's very important to acknowledge that a loan will need repaying and has interest added, which both act as a cash outflow later down the line. Selling fixed assets that are no longer essential for the business is an effective way of increasing cash inflows. This could be in the form of selling old equipment, such as a PC, a piece of machinery, or even a van. If a business has a spare office or warehouse space, it can also increase its cash inflow by renting this out. Now we'll move on to some cash outflows. One of the most costly yet important cash outflows for a business is paying their employees. This tends to be one of the first expenses to get cut back through redundancies when a business hits financial hardship. To be able to sell products or provide services, the majority of businesses will have to purchase materials or products from suppliers. And once they have employees and stock, a business will typically require somewhere to store, demonstrate and sell the product from. Therefore, rent or mortgage payments are another common cash outflow. Alongside the rent or mortgage payment, a business will also have to pay utility bills, such as the water, the gas and electric. And then on top of all these utility bills, you've also got insurance. As you can tell, it's quite easy for a business's cash outflows to increase rapidly once all these little expenses are added up. And one final common cash outflow is repayment and the interest paid on your loans. Please be aware that the cash inflows and outflows discussed are just common examples and the actual amount and the types of cash inflows and cash outflows will actually vary from business to business. To effectively conduct a cash flow forecast, it is important to understand some key terminology and calculations. The opening balance refers to the bank balance at the start of the period and should also match the closing balance from the previous period. Essentially, whatever balance you close a period with, this is the same amount that you must open up with for the next period. The total inflows refers to all of the money that has come into the business that month, including any sales, loans or rental income etc. And is calculated by adding all of the cash inflows together. The total outflows refers to all of the money that has gone out of the business that month. This includes employee wages, utility bills and any purchases etc. And this is calculated by adding up all of the cash outflows together. The net cash flow is a very important figure. This is the difference between all of the money that the business had coming in during the period against everything that they have paid out. It is this figure that determines whether the bank balance will increase at the end of the period or decrease in comparison to what the business opened with. It is calculated by deducting the cash outflows from the cash inflows. The closing balance is a final key piece of terminology to discuss. This is the actual cash that the business is left with at the end of the period. It is calculated by adding the net cash flow to the opening balance. However, if the net cash flow is negative, you would actually deduct this figure from the opening balance. So now you know the key terminology and calculations, let's have a look at an example of cash flow forecasting. So, the cash flow forecast we are going to work through is for a three month period between April, May and June. Let's imagine this is our business and we are now in March, trying to predict what our cash flow is going to look like over the next three months. So at the start of April, we start with an opening balance of £1,200. We then move on to cash inflows, which are going to be the sales and rent of an office space for the next three months. We receive sales income of £6,000 and rental income of £750. 
Now we can calculate our total inflows, which is all of our inflows added together, which in this case is sales and rent. Therefore, the total inflow for April is £6,750. Now we can move on to the cash outflows, which we are currently paying for wages, raw materials, marketing, rent and the repayment of a loan. And you'll see all of those listed on the first column on the left hand side. Wages for April cost us £1,800 and the payments for raw materials total £1,200. Now the following three payments are fixed, within which we pay the same amount every month, regardless of how the business performs. So we pay £125 for marketing every single month, and our rent costs us £1,400. Finally, our loan repayment is £100. By adding all of these together, we can calculate our total outflow for April, which totals £4,625. Now we have calculated our total inflows and total outflows for April, we can now calculate our net cash flow for April. So, total inflows of 6,750 minus total outflows of 4,625 equals a net cash flow of £2,125. Finally, we can calculate our closing balance for April, which is our opening balance of £1,200 plus our net cash flow of £2,125, giving us a closing balance of £3,325 for April. Essentially, we start the month with £1,200 and finish it a couple of thousand pounds better off. So that has been a successful month in April. Now that we've worked through the month of April together, I have put all of the inflows and outflows for our business on your screen for both May and June. What I'd like you to do now is pause your screen and try and calculate the opening balance, the total inflows and outflows, the net cash flow and the closing balance for May and June. I will then show you the correct answers when you restart the video. You've got the figures on your screen, so all you need to do is put an answer in every single box that's got a dark blue shading. Okay, so I hope that went well and you've managed to get an answer for every single space. If you've got any questions or you need something clarifying as to why it's an answer when we go through it, please comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you as quick as I can to put a rational explanation behind the answer. So, the golden rule is the opening balance is always the same as the previous month's closing balance, which in this case was £3,325. All of the inflows added up to equal 5,250 for May, and the total outflows add up to 4,225 pounds. When we deduct our total outflows from our total inflows, it gives us a net cash flow of 1,025 pounds, which is then added to our opening balance of 3,325 pounds to give us a closing balance in May of 4,350 pounds. Therefore, this is what we open with in June. Our total inflows for June equal £4,250 and our total outflows equal £4,325. So now we can deduct our total outflows from our total inflows to give us a net cash flow of minus £75. Which means we are actually predicting to operate at a loss in June. This is something that we should certainly investigate to see if we can spot any reasons for this potential loss and develop any solution before it happens in reality. In this example, our total outflows stay pretty consistent across the three month period. However, it is our sales that have decreased and caused a negative cash flow in June. Therefore, we should now investigate potential solutions to increase sales in the month of June, which could be through a promotion, etc. As we have a negative net cash flow, this is actually deducted from the opening balance to give us a closing balance of £4,275 at the end of June. I hope this video has been a helpful introduction to cash flow forecasting and if it has, remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for lots more business studies videos. There is also an activity worksheet in the description of this video if you would like to test your knowledge. 
Thanks for listening and all the best.